Hey everyone, I'm Richard and today I'm going to be taking you behind the scenes here at Digital Foundry. So previously we've looked at how we use our own software to measure console frame rates, but today I'm going to be showing you how our tools do the same job on PC. So we're going to be talking about our benchmark tests and our PC gameplay performance comparisons that you see on the channel. So first up, a bit of background. A while back the PC specialist press wanted to get to the bottom of micro stutter issues found in multi-GPU PC rigs wasn't being measured properly by existing tools, so a new way of measuring performance was needed. The end result was FCAT, a system that marks up every single frame generated by the graphics card with a coloured border. Nvidia released an overlay tool that adds this border, but what you're seeing here is the same result produced by Revertuner Statistics Server. Now this is pretty cool, because not only do you get the border markup you need for performance analysis, you can also see CPU load, GPU utilisation metrics, memory consumption, everything, the works. But the key thing here is that this footage needs to be captured and the video is then analysed and NVIDIA released a big bunch of scripts to do this. Now, at the time I thought to myself, hang on a second, Digital Foundry is already analysing video for our console performance videos. How much more difficult would it be to integrate FCAT? The answer is actually very difficult. But the end result is that we can show you PC performance in a way that nobody else can. So, check this out. It's a video we ran last year showing Call of Duty Advanced Warfare performance compared on an i3 and an i7 using an R9 280 and a GTX 760. What's important here is how FCAT allows us to measure PC performance in context. The 280 is a faster card than the 760 and if you compare the i7 frame rates that's borne out. But look what happens when the i3 is powering both of those GPUs. The GTX 760 holds most of its performance but the R9 280 has severe issues doing the same. So in a stroke we showed that CPU CPU load using an AMD card here is significantly higher than the NVIDIA equivalent, but what's more enlightening is watching what is happening on screen when the AMD card is struggling. You'll note that it's in more detail rich scenes, particularly when there's much more to render. Now, the CPU prepares instructions for the GPU, so the more work it has to do, the more of a load the AMD driver incurs on the weaker system. On less capable processors, the effect can be devastating. Since then, AMD has worked to improve driver efficiency on this title, but it's still an issue generally, but it's the fact that we have FCAT and the ability to see performance issues in context that really gives us an edge here. So let's dip into our frame rate tool, FPS GUI, and check out another more recent example. So here we go, we're going to be looking at Just Cause 3 here, which is another game that actually caused us uh, some performance issues. We're going to load in GTX 960 footage first. So here we go, here we are in the tool. Now, some interesting stuff here. You can see that generally in this initial section, the GTX 960 is ahead, but it's generally the weaker card. And if we scroll throughout the, uh, throughout the clip, you'll see that the R9 uh, 380 generally moves ahead. And you can see why it's generally the faster card. If we look into our uh, performance metrics here, average frame rate on the GTX 960, 47.5 FPS. And if we look at the R9 380, it's 50. But check out the, the lowest frame rate, 33 on the AMD card, 38 on the Nvidia card. So basically, the lowest performance is actually better on Nvidia, but overall performance is better on AMD. So what's going on there? Let's have a quick look uh, right at the beginning of the clip. Now, frame time is what we need to be looking at here. And you can see that uh, frame time is pretty consistent on both here, but then you get these kind of alarming dips uh, on uh, AMD. And this is basically in-game stutter. And it's an example of how the average frame rate isn't actually really what's important here because those dips are pretty severe and it's really gonna impact your gameplay. So there's, there's another one. Basically, again, performance in context, you can see here that a huge screen filling explosion here. No problem at all for Nvidia, the frame times are pretty consistent. But on the uh, AMD card, you can see that, you know, we're, we're kind of spiking all the way up to, I don't know, 55 uh, milliseconds there. And that's, you know, that's more pronounced. Quite an interesting question really, what's more important, overall performance or in the second performance? And I'd say that it's in the second performance. Now there's some other things which are quite interesting here. Um, traversal in Just Cause, uh, background streaming of assets uh, causes um, uh, CPU to be utilized. And yeah, here we go, check that out. 
that's a huge spike there on um, AMD side. But again, Nvidia is absolutely fine. Stability versus raw performance. I'd say that the um, Nvidia card is probably the better card to have here, even though its average frame rate metric is actually lower. And here's another interesting uh, bit later on in this clip where we have this minigun section. Okay, so in this section here, you can see that the uh, AMD card has quite a substantial advantage. It's a 10 frames per second advantage. But check out what happens when the minigun starts to fire. Now, again, performance in context. You can see here that that advantage has completely disappeared just because the gun is firing. And uh, it's actually now lower than the NVIDIA card, which is just, you know, it's kind of weird, but it's the only thing you can kind of see when you actually have performance in context again. Now, it may seem like we're having a bit of a downer on AMD here, but let's put this into context. It's not a hardware issue. It's about drivers, and you can see that right here. We were looking at day one performance there, but a month down the road, AMD released a Radeon Crimson 16.1 hotfix driver. Now, check out the performance profile here. Most of the stutter is gone. What was a fast card is now even faster with mostly glitch-free gameplay. It's just we really needed that fix to launch alongside the game. So that's a look at how FCAT, in combination with our tools, is a bit of a game changer for measuring PC performance. Metrics such as average frame rate are often used to give some idea of gaming performance and to compare hardware. But this kind of metric is actually quite vague. Frame rates, by their very nature, are quite broad averages. And as you've seen, performance issues in games are somewhat split second in nature. Stutter can seriously impact the enjoyment of the experience but it's momentary and often averaged out somewhat with an average frame rate. With our tools, not only can we identify the trouble spots that are most annoying in gameplay, but we can actually view them in context. We can actually see what might be causing the issues. So what about our PC benchmarks then, uh, when it comes to reviewing the latest and the greatest GPUs? You don't tend to see quite as many issues here in terms of in the moment stutter. The games we tend to test are mature and drivers have been sorted. But let me give you an outline of how we create our videos and an example of how our techniques can highlight some serious issues. Okay, so we're gonna be using Far Cry 4 for this particular analysis. We're gonna import our proxy clip and that needs to point towards our cached analysis. Now this is really cool. FCAT footage actually takes up multi gigabytes of, uh, of space, but we can distill that down to a simple text document that has all of the analysis data and we can cache that off. And uh, yep, Far Cry, there it is. Uh, yeah, that was pretty much, I don't know, three gigabyte file condensed to 167 kilobytes, which is absolutely fantastic. So we bring that in, we give it the right template, and there we go. Right, there we go, that's Far Cry. Uh, that's the R9 382 gigabyte. So let's get the four gigabyte one next. Yep, there's Far Cry. Next we want the GTX 960, this is the two gig gigabyte version. And then we want the uh, four gigabyte 1080p. There we go. Basically, we have two graphics cards that are exactly the same, but they have differing amounts of VRAM. And uh, regular viewers might notice that VRAM is becoming much more of an important issue for PC graphics card buyers these days. A lot more games are using more than two gigs. So what happens when you only have a two gig card and you need more memory? Well, Far Cry 4 really does illustrate this quite nicely. So we're just scrolling through the clip. Right, okay, you can see here on the frame time, uh, we've suddenly had a massive spike on the red graph. The red graph is the R9 380 two gigabytes. Everything else seems fine. As we progress through the clip, you'll see more spikes. This is latency spikes, stutter, and it's caused by the lack of VRAM on the two gigabyte 380. And we'll continue to go in there. Now, let's check this one out. This is a huge spike. Um, I've no idea how big it actually is. Uh, it looks to be about, let's have a look, uh, over 250 milliseconds. It's like a quarter of a, a second, 350 perhaps. We're gonna be here all day. It could be 500. Yeah, it's probably about 450. I mean, that is a huge stutter and that's all because you don't have the uh, four gigabytes of RAM. Now, there's nothing wrong with the hardware as such because you can see that the R9 380 four gigabyte, absolutely no frame time problems at all. But check out the two gigabyte 960 from Nvidia. You'll see that it also has a latency spike. 
50 milliseconds, that's pretty serious. But you can obviously see that of the two two gigabyte cards, it's the NVIDIA one that holds its performance a little bit better. And that actually uh, is the same story the more you go through the clip. The cyan line and the orange lines, they're just completely consistent. And that is because we've got a four gigabyte card there and our analysis shows us that its performance is a lot more solid. And we can actually look at the situation in 1440p. Again, we've got our proxy clip for Far Cry, bringing that in. We're gonna import again as we did before, but this time we're gonna bring in the uh, 1440p analysis. Right, let's see what we can see. Basically, interesting that the four gigabyte cards actually seem to have slightly slower performance here overall, but that's just general clock speed issues. Uh, there's variances between the two versions of the card here. But again, you can see the red line, the two gigabyte 380, big, big latency spikes. Won't bother measuring those, suffice to say they're big. Uh, the 962 gigabyte, here's an interesting one. Um, you can see that it also has issues. I mean, again, the AMD card, the stutter is much, much more pronounced. And it's the same as you go through the clip. It's exactly what we saw at 1080p, just more exaggerated because VRAM utilization at 1440p is that much more pronounced. So there we go. We've previously shown how FPS GUI works with console games, but arguably in combination with the FCAT system, the tool takes on a whole new level of PC hardware. Graphics cards are the most obvious areas of testing, but it's relatively easy to shift the balance in a gaming PC. So in the past, we've also analyzed CPUs and memory, often with surprising results. Put simply, it's been a hugely useful tool for us. Anyway, that's it for now. If there's anything else about our work that you'd like to ask about, drop us a line in the comments. Remember that we also have other Inside Digital Foundry videos to check out, how we work out the native resolution of console games, and also how we use FPS GUI to measure PS4 and Xbox One performance. There's links to both of those below. But that's all for now. Thanks for watching.